Hi, welcome to Procar to our uh, YouTube channel and welcome to the first episode of the rebuild of the V10 engine with the field injector. And um, let me show you what's going on now and uh, how we found out that the injector had failed. So let's see. <laughs> So here we are cranking uh, the engine to get all the fuel out of uh, cylinder number 10 that had a failing injector as you can see and it was even uh, spitting out some metal shavings off the cylinder wall as you can see here. So we're back, uh, this is the engine I was talking about earlier on the field injector that caused uh, a lot of damage to the cylinder wall as we can see here. Uh, if the camera can focus, yes, um, that's caused by a filled injector because the rod had been bent because of the hydro lock and it uh, forced the piston to move sideways and it really damaged the cylinder wall badly. I don't, uh, I don't think yeah, we can repair it but we actually talked with a customer about it and uh, decided to buy a new engine at BMW uh, with pistons, short block new, with new pistons and um, that will be quicker to repair than have the block honed at a machine shop that will take probably currently now a few months actually so we want to fix the car soon, uh, quick and, and have it up running again so we chose uh, to have uh, we chose to, to to just buy a new engine block from BMW. It costs a lot of money, but you have a new engine block with new pistons and uh, piston springs. Um, so the rod that has been bent is sitting here. I think we can focus the camera good enough to show you how much it has been bent and uh, this is the force of uh, the hydro lock on the engine because uh, liquid is not it's not able being able to compress like air so this is what had caused to the rod and um, we got the engine uh, all dismantled all the parts laying around here, we cleaned some parts um, uh, the, some parts are being renewed we have checked the oil pump and the oil pump luckily enough was good enough to use it again um, there was some metal shavings in the engine but most of them were in the uh, oil pan we got, uh, we got it cleaned up and taking all the engine uh, or the uh, metal shavings out of it we uh, the oil lines we cleaned up really well and the other parts are laying around we got them cleaned up and waiting to be mounted again if the engine comes in so that's the story now actually what we what we did first was uh, we bought a uh, used engine because the customer said hey this is going to cost too much let's buy a used engine we bought the used engine and we said hey if we're going to buy a used engine just uh, to be sure just replace the rod bearings and the uh, injectors and have it a go so the car can be up running uh, quick but we did that and we found out the rod bearing on the used engine we bought for this car uh, were really really bad and it had damaged the crankshaft so bad that the, we didn't want to take the risk and, uh, and use that engine in the car and I can show you that engine is laying around at the other side of the shop so this is the used engine we bought where we have checked the rod bearings and uh, the last bearing we checked was damaged so we couldn't use this engine and it had to uh, be returned to the seller unfortunately because uh, we wanted to get the car up and running quickly 
as a customer uh, wanted to have his car back in a few weeks but um, it left us with no option then buy a uh, new short block from BMW with new pistons and rebuild it to uh, to have the car up and running uh, as quickly as we could but uh, this is the risk when you buy a used engine and uh, now I want to show you guys what we start uh, first when we take the engine apart okay we start off by uh, showing you guys um, the first steps in rebuilding the engine well first step is of course taking the engine out as you can see we've already taken the engine out and this is how it looks when the engine is out of the M5 well as you can see here we got the engine on the lift table along with the gearbox and subframe and the next step is to uh, remove the gearbox from the engine so that's what uh, what we're doing now first we get the uh, wiring out of the way before we remove the bolts of the gearbox uh, most commonly problem on the SMG wiring is that the insulation gets uh, gets hard and cracks open like you see here somebody did his best to repair this but still some wirings are still damaged uh, you can see the inside of the wiring it's not a pretty good job so we need to fix this uh, when we continue and uh, here uh, we are trying to remove the gearbox from the uh, from the engine we got another lift table so we can support the gearbox here we take a look at the inside of the gearbox bell housing as you can see there's grease all over the place um, yeah well I think somebody else tried to grease up the release bearing because it made noise or something we don't know but we have to remove all the grease and uh, go on here you can see the uh, the engine without uh, the gearbox still on the lift table and you can see as well the twin clutch disc pack on the s85 uh, anyways we uh, need to remove the subframe first in order to access all the uh, other engine accessory parts uh, after we remove it from the lift table and the subframe is removed we're gonna put the engine on a uh, engine uh, stand so we are able to rotate it to access the upper parts of the engine and the lower uh, parts so the first things we always check if we remove the subframe is to see if we have a, a bad engine mount as you can see here this one is uh, pretty worn out and it's always the left side that uh, wears out quicker than the right side so we need to replace this as well here you can see the the beautifully the well designed individual throttle bodies and that make great induction noise when uh, when you have a, a carbon intake installed even without the carbon intake it makes a beautiful sound uh, anyways uh, here you can see me disassemble the wiring harness of the engine uh, it's a pretty easy job if you compare this with a S63 with the V8 twin turbo that is a nightmare to, to uh, disassemble all the connectors and everything but on the S85 it's uh, pretty straightforward pretty simple so next up uh, I will be removing all the parts that are sitting in between the, the V banks like for instance the two throttle bodies, uh, the starter motor, the two idle actuators that need to be removed and uh, we'll be in removing the throttle bodies as well so after we removed all the parts um, we are going to remove the throttle bodies and this is how it looks like when the throttle bodies are taken out you can clearly see how well designed the intake ports are well machined for better flow and for better performance of course okay, I want to thank you guys for watching the first episode on uh, rebuilding this uh, S85 engine from the M5 
I will explain more about disassembling all engine parts in the next episode, so make sure to subscribe to our channel so you will be notified when we uh, resume with this uh, project. Thanks for watching, see you next time.